My name is Anne, and welcome to Weightlifting for Life. And we're shooting this episode in our kitchen, my actual kitchen. Uh, my husband and Chris and I have lost over 250 pounds between the two of us. And what most people ask us, the first question most people ask us, is what do you eat that has caused you to lose 250 pounds? Let me start with what we don't eat or at least what we've done in this weight loss journey that has helped us get where we are today. The first thing we did was we stopped drinking all alcohol. Not a, a judgment on how anyone else wants to live their life, but that is what we chose to do. The second thing we chose to do is we chose to throw away just about everything in our kitchen that was processed or made in a factory or came in a box. Uh, which was really kind of a difficult experience, but it was really good for us to throw out all the things that were just really not good for us and start completely fresh from scratch. The second, third thing we tried to do is we tried to move to an organic as much as possible food way of eating. We live in what is considered a food desert. We, there are very few farms, very few farm fresh things along the way. So we do the best we can in this. We aren't purists. We don't make this the big deal and the biggest focus. We try to be organic as much as possible and do the best we can, realizing that some people have more access to some of the farm fresh products than other folks do. Uh, the focus of much of our meals, focus, uh, the food that we eat primarily is similar to what you learned about in health class as a kid. Fruits and vegetables are the basis of what we eat. We eat typically six to ten cups of fruits and vegetables a day. Yes, full serving cups. Things that we eat a lot of, broccoli, tons of nutrients, many different ways you can cook it, bananas, tomatoes, apples, potatoes. Some of these things we try to purchase organically or farm fresh. Other things we can't, we do, the we do the best we can. We also have a lot of berries, strawberries, blueberries, and whatever fruit tends to be in season. Buying fruit in season tends to save you significant amounts of money. The second thing we did is we added in very large amount of protein to our diet. Protein makes you feel full, makes you eat less. And because of that, if you're not snacking, it helps you. And we use a large number of different protein options to help keep us full. Whey protein helps build muscle. A very common protein, we will make this into shakes to fill you up in terms of volume as well as to fill your stomach up so you don't feel hungry. Eggs. Um, my husband eats a lot of eggs. Personally, I don't care for the taste. So I have chosen egg protein and made that into shakes, which I tend to prefer instead. The eggs that we buy typically are brown eggs or farm fresh. One of my friends has a farm. We tend to buy her eggs because we know where they come from. Otherwise, we look for all natural or organic eggs, looking for eggs that are not full of hormones that have pumped, been pumped into much of our commercial chicken. Another type of protein that we use a lot of, lean turkey. Realize, of course, the food industry knows that people are looking for these things and not all lean turkey is created equal. You need to look for words like extra lean. Or on turkey, you see numbers. This one is 99 to 1. That's good. That means that there's almost no fat in it. Most of the common turkey you'll see on the market today is 85-15 or 80-20. It means 20% of it is fat. Typically, they take the skin of the chicken and grind, or the turkey and grind it in there as well. It's just not nearly as healthy for you. We get a lot of Amish chicken. Um, it is harder, again, to get organic chicken up where we live, so we look for the Amish. Amish typically do not look and put hormones into their chicken. Um, we avoid the chicken breasts you see in the store in the big bags because often what they do is they insert chicken broth into the chicken breast to make them look bigger, which adds sodium, which your body just does not need. We have way too much sodium in our diet and our culture it is causing so many of the problems that we have, and we've tried to eliminate as much sodium as we possibly can. So getting chicken breast that on the ingredients label say chicken and not things like broth or other things that have been added is very important. Fish is another major protein component in our diet. Tuna. We look for the low sodium tuna, salmon, which tends to be natural low sodium, as well as fish fillets. Again, we don't live in an area where fishing is very easy, so we go and buy the fish that we can as best we can. Another protein.
protein source that you may want to consider is peanut butter, particularly vegetarian. But again, peanut butter is extremely high in fat. Even the low-fat peanut butter heavily, heavily processed and doesn't even really taste that good. A product that I found, there's two of them. This one is PB2. A competitor is called Fit Nuts. You can Google it. I buy them online. They're equal in terms of taste. And what PB2 or Fit Nuts is, is they basically dry the peanuts, take all of the fat out, they take, and all you're left with is it's a peanut powder. And you can reconstitute it with water or put it into a, a shake, and it tastes absolutely fantastic. And it's a great source of protein without adding in all of the fat. We also eat a lot of nuts. Look for whole, unroasted nuts, typically in the baking part of your grocery store. We buy these at a, at a whole food store. That is a little far away, but worth the trip. Um, don't look for things that have added salt, and the roasted typically adds extra fat. So I would work to stay away from that. We also have not a lot of dairy, but we do incorporate some dairy into our diet as a way of adding protein, as well as calcium. Cottage cheese is a big one, fat-free cottage cheese. And Greek yogurt is another wonderful thing that we've added to our diet. We mix it with berries. We mix it with the peanut butter. We mix it sometimes with dried cocoa. Fantastic. Another thing, is, especially if you don't necessarily care for the taste of Greek yogurt, we will add a sweetener to it, not sugar. And we started out using a lot of Splenda, but we don't anymore. Now we switch to a product called Stevia. Stevia is made from a plant. Splenda is very heavily, full of a lot of different chemicals that I'm just not really comfortable putting into my body. So we buy Stevia, again, at the Whole Foods store. There are lots of brands. You can buy some of it in a regular grocery store. But the different brands do taste differently, so you're going to have to play around to find out what you like in terms of sweetener. But the thing about Stevia, it is a little expensive, but you use significantly less of it than you would sugar, which helps to cut down on the cost. 